to Hiroshin, uttered Lan Wangji's name, did the man turn back around. But his gaze was still slightly averted. Upon seeing this, Hiroshin blinked a few times and felt an inexplicable urge to make trouble. However, just as he was about to open his mouth and tease Lan Wangji, he was interrupted by the sound of something shattering near the table. Both of the men stood and looked toward the source of the noise. The only sight that greeted them was that of the teapot and the teacups in pieces, scattered all over the floor, and the chimp and pouch lying in the middle of the flowery white shards of porcelain and the pool of spilled tea. The surface of the pouch fidgeted and squirmed non-stop, as though something was trapped inside, impatient to break free. Though the chin can pouch appeared to be no larger than the size of a person's palm, it was purpose-built for storage, and both the inside and outside were embroidered with complex incantations, bolstering it, bolstering it, with several layers of seals. Earlier, Lan Wangji had sealed the arm inside the pouch and placed it under a teacup on top of the table. Upon seeing its present agitation, he and Wei Wuxian finally recalled that the time had come for their nightly duet. If they didn't play tranquil lullaby and temporarily pacify the arm every evening, then regardless of the extent of the Chen Kan pouch's evil suppressing power, they could not rely on it alone to keep the ghost on captive. Weishin reached for the bamboo flute at his waist, but found nothing. Turning, he saw that Lan Wangji was already holding it in his hands. The latter nodded slightly and proceeded to devote his wholehearted efforts to whittling at the instrument for a period, before handing it back. Examining the refurbished flute, Lewishin saw that its finger holes and other formerly coarse details were now far finer. Play it properly, Nananji said. Lewishin remembered how, back at the Abyssal Tower, he had played so unbearably badly that, infuriated, Lanchi Ren rose from his unconscious stupor and vomited up blood before losing consciousness again. He nearly fell over in laughter. It must pain him to put up with me this long, he thought. Finished with his mischief, he placed his flute against his lip in earnest. After only a couple of phrases of music, without warning, the chin can pouch grew several times its original size and stood upright. Pfft, where we abruptly broke off the note he was playing. What? It got used to listening to ugly play, so now that I'm playing nicely, it doesn't like it, he wondered. As if in reply, the chin can pouch hurled itself at Wei Wuxian. The melody that sang beneath Lan Wangji's fingers abruptly changed. His hand swept over the good chin, whose seven strings began vibrating in unison, unleashing a furious, mountain toppling cry. Assaulted, by the wave of sound, the chinkin pouch fell back onto the floor. Wewishin continued playing as though nothing had happened. Relaxing his wrist, Lan Wangji followed along with tranquil lullaby, the notes of his good chin becoming calm and peaceful again as they slowly blended with the sound of the flute. At the song's conclusion, the chinkin pouch finally shrank back to the original size and lay still again. Wewishin stuck his flute back by his waist. In all these past days, it's never been as restive as today. It's as though something provoked it. Lan Wangji nodded and turned toward him, adding, moreover, it was something on your body. Wewishin immediately lowered his head and inspected himself. His body 
had gained only one new thing today. The curse mark that had been transferred over from Jin Ling's leg. But Jin Ling's curse mark was left by something inside the stone fortress on Xing Lu Ridge. Since the ghost arm reacted so violently to it, doesn't that mean that a part of the arm's body might be inside the Saber Temple's walls? Liu Xian said. Bright and early the next morning, the two set off back to Xing Lu Ridge. When Nia Hui Sang had been caught the previous day, he had confessed to everything, down to his clan's oldest and deepest secrets. Afterward, that same night, he had convened a crew of the Nia clan's most trusted disciples and confidants to help him clean up the horrible mess left by the intruders. When Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji walked in, the Nia clan had already replaced the missing corpse. Niu Hui Sang had just finished supervising the restoration of the portion of the wall where Wei Wuxian had dug out Jin Ling. He repeatedly wiped the sweat from his face as he watched his people lay down layer upon layer of neat, white stone, free of any suspicion that when he turned around, his legs would go soft beneath him. Hong Kong Jun, and you, sir, he said, forcing a smile. Wei Wuxian waved and grinned. Can chief near, he greeted, laying bricks for the wall. Nia Hui Sang wiped his handkerchief against his sweaty forehead again, now on the verge of removing a layer of skin. Yes, 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 he mumbled. Sorry, but we may have to trouble you to rebuild it one more time. Wei Wuxian's voice was both full of sympathy and a little bit sheepish. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Wait a second. But before Nia Hui Sang had even finished speaking, Li Chen left its scabbard. The clan chief gaped as he watched his newly rebuilt brick wall being split open again. Destruction was always easier than creation. Wei Wuxian tore down the bricks at lightning speed, countless times faster than the Nia clan had laid them. Nia Hui Sang clutched his folding fan, trembling, tears threatening to leak from his eye sockets at the sheer injustice of it all. Unfortunately, however, an expressionless Hang Guang Jun was standing nearby, and thus he dared not open his mouth. Lan Wang Ji proceeded to give Nia Hui Sang a concise but comprehensive explanation of his and his companion's actions. Upon hearing it, the clan chief swore to the earth and the heavens. It's not here. It's definitely not here. Our Saber Temple only uses intact corpses. There are absolutely no dead men with missing arms. If you don't believe me, we can tear down the wall. You can verify my clan's innocence yourself. But afterwards, it has to go back up immediately. The wall can't be left in ruin for too long. This is our ancestral tomb. Several near disciples joined them and set to work. Thus, Wei Wuxian withdrew and waited on the sidelines for the outcome. After an hour, they had taken down most of the bricks covering the wall inside which Jin Ling had been buried. In order to prevent the corpses inside from transforming from contact with human energy, some of the disciples put masks over their faces, while others downed some special red pills. Occasionally, a blue-white hand or a veiny foot protruded from the dark soil, and there was filthy black hair tangled up everywhere. Once removed, each male corpse was subjected to a cursory cleaning and placed flat on the ground in rows. Some of the corpses were already nothing more than pale bone, whereas others were still rotting and still others were completely fresh. They wore a hundred expressions and were arranged in a thousand poses, but every single one was in possession 
of a full set of limbs. Not a single male corpse with a missing arm was to be found. Taking down this wall should be enough, right? Nia Hui Sang said cautiously. Is there any further need to tear down another? There shouldn't be, right? Indeed, it was enough. The curse mark found on Jin Ning's body had been extremely dark, so the thing that had left it couldn't have been far from where he had been buried. It could only be inside the very same wall. Mei Xin squatted beside one of the rows of bodies, and Lan Wangji spoke after a few minutes of careful contemplation. Take out the Qian Kun Pao. Removing the arm from the pouch and having it identify its own body wasn't a bad idea. The problem was, if it got too close to its counterparts, it would inevitably become excited, plunging the situation into even more dangerous territory. Furthermore, their current location was very much out of the ordinary. The air was heavy with yin energy. Thus, the degree of risk was already exponentially higher. That was why Liu Yixian and Lan Wangji had been careful to come during the daytime. The former shook his head. Could the arm belong to someone other than a man? No, I can tell a man's hand from a woman's hand at first glance. Then, could its owner have had three arms? Just as he was amusing himself with his own made-up notion, Lan Wang Ji spoke again. The legs. Now that the man had brought it up, Wei Wishan finally realized that he had indeed overlooked something. The curse mark targeted only the legs. Trousers off, trousers off, he said hurriedly. Why would you say something so shameful in front of Han Guangzhen? Niu Hui Sang said, his voice filled with sheer, unrelenting horror. What's so shameful about it? We're all men here, Mei Wishin replied. Help, please. Take off all the corpses' trousers. Don't bother with the female corpses. This has nothing to do with them. Strip only the men. As he spoke, he reached out and grasped a belt sash tied around one of the prone bodies with a claw-like hand. Poor Nia Hui Sang, having divulged everything yesterday, he could never have predicted that today, where Wishin would demand a bunch of corpses be stripped of their trousers right inside his clan's ancestral sabre hall. On top of everything, they were male corpses. Clan Chief Nia could only conclude that upon reaching the afterlife, he was fated to have his ears cuffed by every single one of his seniors, up and down the Ching He Nia ancestral line. The blows would cripple even his reincarnation. The entirety of his face became wet with tears. Fortunately, Lan Wangji stopped Wei Wuxian from finishing his action. However, just as Nia Hui Sang was about to exclaim his admiration for Han Guangzhen and how much Han Guangzhen truly deserved his title, the man spoke again. Allow me. Allow you? Wei Wuxian replied, Are you really willing to do this sort of thing? The corners of Lan Wangji's eyebrow seemed to twitch slightly, as though he were patiently enduring something. Stay put, allow me, he repeated. Among all of the shocks Nia Hui Sang had suffered today, this one was the largest. Of course, Lan Wangji was not actually going to remove the corpse's trousers by hand. Instead, he used beach and spiritual energy to cut through the corpse's clothes, exposing the skin beneath. He was not required to slice open some of the corpse's outfits at all, as the cloth had long decayed and become riddled with holes. In barely a moment's time, he said, I found it. Hastily, everyone looked down at the ground. Next to Lan Wangji's white boots was a corpse whose thighs were circumscribed with barely visible stitching. The stitches were numerous, close together, 
and made a fine flesh-colored thread, and the skin above and below the seam was subtly different in tone. Clearly, the corpse's legs and upper body did not belong to the same person. Someone had sewn the two legs on. Niu Hui Sang was stunned. We wish and ask. Who chooses which corpses are used as offerings at your clan's temple? Normally, each clan chief chooses and stores the bodies themselves while they are alive, Niu Hui Sang replied in a daze. But my brother passed away at a young age and didn't stockpile enough of them, so I helped him pick out a few. As long as the corpse's face and limbs were all intact, I kept it. I don't know anything other than that. Questioning Nia Hui Sang was a hopeless endeavor. It would not reveal who had taken advantage of the troubled waters surrounding Nia Ming Jue's death and fished out the opportunity to bury the patchwork corpse without anyone knowing. The suspects were innumerable, from whoever had provided the corpses to the inner disciples of the Ching He Nia clan. Unfortunately, it seemed that the only way to discover precisely what had happened was to find the rest of the victim's parts and piece together his body and soul. At last, they separated the pair of legs from the legless torso while placing them into a new chin Kun pouch where Wuxian spoke to Lan Wangji. It looks as though someone roped our dear friend to some horses and had him torn apart limb from limb. Plus, not only was he dismembered, the pieces of his body have also been tossed all over the place. One here, one there. How big of a grudge was the murderer holding? We'll have to pray that our dear friend hasn't been chopped up into too many pieces. The Nia Hui Sang still said come again as Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji took their leave. Judging by his fearful face, he probably never wanted to see them again in this lifetime. The pair left Xingli Ridge and returned to the inn. Only after arriving at the relatively secure location did they remove the three limbs from their pouches and begin carefully comparing them. Indeed, the legs and the left arm did have the same skin tone. Moreover, if they were placed near each other, they would react with non-stop violent shaking as though desperately wanting to reunite but to no avail. In the absence of the torso, which should have lay between them, there was no place for the limbs to join together. In any case, the parts could only belong to the same person. In life, the corpse had belonged to a tall and imposing man with long limbs and a sturdy physique, who, in addition, had reached a truly exceptional level of cultivation. Other than this, however, Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji still knew absolutely nothing about him. The mystery was as deep and confusing as ever. Fortunately, the arm soon pointed them toward the next destination, southwest. Following its lead, Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji arrived in Yueyang.